is Nan Teinberg of the Palm Springs Public Library's Local History Project. I am here today with Earl Neal. Earl Neal's parents settled in the desert area as early as 1904, and Earl has been a part of the history of Palm Springs even as a young child. We are going to talk about the nursery business and many other matters relating to the earlier days of our town. We are in Palm Springs, and today's date is April 20, 1987. Earl, I mentioned your parents, and they arrived in the valley shortly after the turn of the century, a long time ago. Why did they come, and where did they come from? Well, my mother was born in, in uh, San Jacinto, California, just on the other side of the hill, and my father came out from West Virginia around 1902. And uh, they, my dad liked the desert, and they s settled, they were married in Coachella in 1904. And they just went farming, and then the Salton Sea came in 1905 and 6 and covered up their ranch. And then they went from there to Mesquite, Nevada for about six months, and then over to Colton, and back down into Palm Springs, and the Indio, and Coachella, and just been around there ever since. And they were involved in agriculture. And My father was uh, raising cantaloupes uh, for seed. Seed at that time, everybody figured that uh, cantaloupes were poisonous, so they were developing cantaloupes <laughs> and for seed crops. And then he worked around there in uh, Redlands and Smiley Heights. Uh, that was the place where all the English people came over mm -hmm. the orange groves, mm -hmm. and he did a lot of work around those places. And then back and forth to here, and we he trucked polo ponies and. Oh, I did about all, just about everything. <laughs> did a lot of things. Yeah. I'm curious about the Salton Sea. I, wasn't that, is, wasn't that man-made? Oh, no. Oh. The uh, Salton Sea was uh, formed, started forming from the flood in 1905. And it, the silt built up at, uh, just below Blythe at Ripley. Yes. And then that silt built up and shut off the water going in the Gulf of Mexico on down the Colorado River. And it overflowed down at Ripley and flowed in, which is under under the below sea level, mm -hmm. and they couldn't stop it. Took them about a year and a half, two years to stop it. And the Southern Pacific Railroad uh, really was responsible for stopping it. They brought in flat cars of boulders and and big cars full of boulders, and they tipped the cars and everything over mm. to stop the water from coming in there. Were your parents literally wiped out? Oh yes, this? took everything. Uh, they were just mm -hmm. below Coachella at uh, about around Thermal. And a lot of land, land is still underwater, and it's just getting uh, higher all the time. That's interesting piece. You can still see the uh, wheels and the uh, trucks on the old uh, flat cars and railroad cars where they turn upside down. You can still yeah. see them today where they stop the water from coming. Amazing. In. I we you have a photograph uh, that if you might want to explain, I we can. Get in on this. Twenty mule teams. Yeah, Literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fence posts and firewood. This and was your parents. Mm -hmm, my father. And this was about 1904. Mm -hmm. And uh, was that working around the area or yeah, actually right around, moving mm -hmm. moving here? Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Now, you moved to at at one point in this early time. Your parents moved to actually to Palm Sp the Palm Springs area. And uh, I, I'm curious where you lived, where you remember where you lived as a young man growing up, where your, your first house in Palm Springs, <laughs> for example. Well, we there were two houses on uh, where Indian Avenue and Palm Canyon come together, a couple of tile houses. You may remember them. They, mm -hmm. they just tore them down a few years ago. Yes. We lived in one, and uh, the priest at the Catholic Church lived in the other. Then we lived on Indian Avenue, right about in a 300 block. And then my folks had a house on Ramon Road, still there. And my mother had a house on uh, Kali and Celia. And I lived in this, uh, the house next door. I lived there about 18 years, and I lived here about 30 years in this house. Mm -hmm. after, after the war, I got this. This this is a, a an old wonderful landmark. Yes, it is. It's uh, it was built by uh, for Lawrence Davis and a previous president of uh, of U.S. Steel. And of course, when I bought it, uh, 
They were no air conditioning. They didn't need it. They didn't yes. even have it in those days yes. when this was built. Well, later we'll probably take some footage mm -hmm. of, of this house as well as the, the nursery. When you attended Francis Stevens School, which you, you did attend for mm -hmm. grammar school, you were living uh, in one of the houses on Indian Avenue. Would that be the yeah. case? Mm -hmm. yeah, you probably no. obviously walked right to oh, yeah. school. It yeah. was right up the street. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Do you remember any of your teachers at Francis Well, Stevens? I had uh, uh, Miss Finchie, Catherine Finchie, who taught us in the seventh and eighth grade. And yes. I Miss Newberry taught us in the third, fourth, and fifth, yes. I think. And was she as wonderful as people say, oh, Miss yeah. Newberry? Oh, yeah, Apparently wonderful, big, big woman. Dedicated. Yeah, <laughs> really nice. What, what did she look like? Was she large oh, and yeah. imposing? Oh, yeah, large person? woman with uh, gray hair, Very always dressed well and mm. always looked real nice. Who were some of your schoolmates? We do have a picture of your graduating class, but you you were probably in a room with more than just your There were two classes, yes. uh, seventh and eighth grade were in the same room. This Esther Pauling and uh, John Miller, John Miller still lives here in town, he's lived here most of his, all his life, yes. I guess, and, uh, and Esther Pauling, as jo she was a granddaughter of the millionaire barber, he called oh, him, yes. and uh, she's still around, in fact, mm -hmm. I talked to her on the phone not too long ago, but other than that, uh, a lot of the kids that were in our class came from uh, Garnett, they worked on the their parents worked on the railroad, so I, they've mm -hmm. moved since moved away, and I've, I haven't talked to any of them. Joe Potencio and uh, Paul Siva, they're they're still around here. Or Joe Joe died. Joe Potencio died yes. quite a while ago. So you you did attend classes. You remember most of the Indian oh yeah kids yeah. and uh, the McKinneys. Oh the yeah, McKinney. McKinney. Well, it, it happened that Theodore and Barbara and Don were all. Uh, and much younger than I am, and uh, and Willard and I were about the same age, and he he's dead. Yes. And, uh, but they would have all been in. Oh in yeah, school well, school is just the like the, the whole the whole school. Francis yeah. <laughs> the same time. We have a wonderful picture of the. Can you see this? Is this of the? Uh, I guess it would be the eighth grade. Yeah, graduating class, mm -hmm. and then we went to high school in Banning. We had to go on a bus. It wasn't any high school. I here know. I will talk about that in <laughs> a few minutes. W is it possible for you to point out where you are here, or yeah, maybe? Right, right here. Right in there. And that's Joe Potencio. Joe Potencio and John Miller's right there. This that's is about the only ones I could. Uh, is this in front of the school? Yeah, yes, right in front of This is actually in front of, of, front of this the school. And uh, this would have been 30s? Uh, 32 uh, or 33, early, I think. Early yeah. 30s. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful picture. I wanted to, before we get to high school, I wanted to ask you about, about the Indians. You, of course, knew them rather well. You talked about going to some of the ceremonies. And w did you sneak in or were you invited? Or as kids, uh, did you just get a chance no, to No, we watch? were pretty closely. Uh, Paul Siva and, and like Joe Potenci and I were real good friends and no we were invited. Uh, uh, Jimmy Maynard was uh, another mm. he was younger than I am but we all used to run around together and and we they were we were invited we always go and we couldn't participate in of the course. they always did a lot of gambling uh, but they wouldn't let us do that of course but we oh the Indians did gambling yeah uh, they have at some that time. kind of thing they pass the bone underneath the blanket you all sit down that blanket's all over and then they. Oh. And they, then you guess, try to guess who has it, and I don't, I don't remember just how they did it. That's, oh, and they bet on that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mm -hmm. wasn't aware. I thought that was some mysterious, health, healthful uh, ritual or, or something. And a lot of the Indians would come down from Anza and up in that country, Twilliger, and they'd come down and attend those things too, and from the banning of the Morongo Reservation. Yes. You mentioned uh, an early agent. He must have been one of the first, Quackenbush. Quackenbush, yes. He was, I think he was the first uh, Indian agent, and I then... Think so. uh, Joe Wilmus, uh, he was an Indian, but mm -hmm. he uh, he was worked as a. Uh, I think he worked with Quackenbush you know, for a number of years. They had an office right where the spa hotel, yes. right where the old bathhouse was. I I have been talking to another, a later Indian agent, and he was very much involved in the operation of the bathhouse. The agent was, 
do you, would, would Quackenbush had been in, been involved in? Oh yeah, in they that? collected the fees and all that. Do you yeah. recall that? Mm -hmm. you know, did you, as kids, did you go to the bathhouse? I've never been in it. I've been down there a lot of time. But I never got in that, in that water. I don't know. It's, uh, in the old days, it was so dilapidated. I was it's so dirty around there. Not really. It know, was, in right fact, in, uh, mud. <laughs> That's right. what you it was. Know, I didn't like that. At this early age, when you were attending uh, school at Francis Stevens, your parents were your parents in the nursery business in town, or were they in Redlands at this time? No, they were here, and uh, the, of course, the town was so small. Mm -hmm. it, it really, as far as the nursery, didn't would didn't amount to a whole lot. But the uh, yeah, we were involved. In the, and where and where was their it's operation? It's on Indian Avenue. Did your mother work in the nursery as no, well? No. Your, your father mm -hmm. ran it. They probably knew most of the notables in town, and and of course you certainly did as a young child. I wonder what your impression is of of some of the people that that your parents would have known. For example, Nellie Kaufman. Do do you remember her as a young child? Of course, you knew her as a young man, but but do you recall what what your dealings were with her as a as a young child? Oh yes, she was always a very liberal. Liberal. She's a always at the, uh, at the Easter and Thanksgiving and all that, she'd always invite the children over. Yes. And the Boy Scouts, and they'd put on a big Easter egg hunt for everybody and a nice breakfast, and uh, she was very active in that way. She was very generous. And, and Earl and Kaufman that. was always the same thing, George Roberson. You remember the, the three sisters, Henrietta, of course, Henrietta is still oh, around, yeah, Henrietta yeah. Parker, and yeah. it would have been Lily Goff and Zaddy. Yeah, very well. <laughs> they were all very different. <laughs> oh, yeah, they sure were. Yeah. Yeah, Zaddy was Christ. I've flown with her quite a number of times. And they called her the flying grandmother. Right, <laughs> right. We'll talk about flying yeah. later, but that is that must have been remarkable. Uh, were they around town? I know Zaddy was very visible around town. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lily Goff ran the hotel. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I was very friendly with Chet and uh, her uh, younger son and Dawson. Yeah, we went around uh, quite a bit, and they would always fill us full of ice cream, and mm. everything was, was pretty good. Kids. Where where would they get the ice cream? Was there there was a sweet shop? I understand. Do you remember the sweet shop? There well, was a it hole was in the wall, evidently. It was one on uh, Desert Inn grounds. Oh yeah. The right, oh. At, right at the entrance to the Desert Inn, it was there for a long time until it was sold. Really, can't remember the name of it. But. Do you remember Dr. Coker? Oh yeah. Mm. And his wife Rita, I we were very friendly with her. He, of course, Dr. Coker died years ago, but yes. we were very friendly with Rita Coker's wife. What about the White sisters? Oh yeah. Were yeah. they as interesting as everybody? Wonderful, says? wonderful people. Yeah. And they were interesting to look at too. They were. Yeah, well, they were. Cornelia. <laughs> they, and they had some. Real good jokes, you know, a real a kind of dry sense of humor, but yes. they were very nice. Yes. Also, as a young boy, you mentioned some of the uh, activities that you participated in. Uh, really, you you were part of the natural environment even then. You you fished in the canyons, and what were some of the other activities that you did on weekends, for example, in well, we, summers. <laughs> we hiked a lot, and uh, of course, it was very active in the Boy Scouts. Uh, Glenn McKinney mm -hmm. was a scoutmaster, and all the McKinney boys were all active, and Clarence Macy and I, and we spent a lot of time in the summertime up in Idlewild to the Boy Scout camp, and, and then Glenn was always very helpful. We had a good group, and uh, uh, go take us over to the Boulder Dam, and mm -hmm. we, we came down the river in a Colorado River in a whale boat before they, when they blasted off the sides of the mountain, that was a famous picture where they had the tunnels, diversion tunnels, and then they blasted off. We were there when that happened, and uh, we, did, we were really active in that Boy Scouts. Would you say, did Glenn start start the Boy Scouts? Yeah, he was the first scoutmaster. That is. Mm -hmm. Admirable. I yep. know it's and still he active. really put a lot of time in it. He was darn good. He was really strict with the kids, and and uh, he, we had a, a Mr. Wicks lived right down the street here. Mm -hmm. 
He always, Henry Wicks, he was always oh, yes. uh, lunacy one of his cars or yes. buy his gas, and he always helped out that way. And we had, we talked to his granddaughter, Jenny oh, really? Tui. Oh, yes. Yeah. We uh, photographed the, the house. Oh, he, he was, yeah, duck yeah, they were here a long time oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that house was built before this one was, I think. Yes, yeah. we have photographs of the house. You talked about fishing and fishing and swimming in Tokwitz Camp. Oh yeah, we used to fish there all the time and then we moved the rocks around and fixed yeah. it so you could get a place deep enough to swim in and dive into and you dive off the rocks and Did it work? Oh sure. That's and then fantastic. we we used to go fishing there and then up in Snow Creek we used to fish a lot up there. What what fish? Trout. Trout. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that's the only kind of fish that we're in there. Oh, that uh, that sounds idyllic. It really does. <laughs> Things have changed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're sort of up to the the bus to, to banning, and we've heard a little bit about that. But uh, can you describe what what kind of procedure <laughs> that was? I imagine you had to get up uh, extremely early in the morning. You know, it was always dark when we left and oh. dark when we got back, huh. and the thing would break down about three <laughs> times a week. <laughs> Was an what old was real, the road like? <laughs> well, it was it was paved, but it was oh. skinny, and a uh, lot of a lot of big dips, and we'd have a trouble get those big hay trucks and everything that only going real slow, and we'd get behind one of those couldn't pass, and oh, it's always late for school. Or <laughs> I was going to say, what were did did the kids from Palm Springs tend to miss a lot of school, or was that not? Well, every time we got a chance, we'd duck out. <laughs> <laughs> But not because of the bus. That no, wasn't an excuse. And then if we went to play football yes. or had a sports event or in, ha in the Hemet or San Jacinto or, or Beaumont, then it was midnight before you get home, or one, two o'clock in the morning. And what night. were you, what were your sports? Did you oh, know? I wasn't very good at anything. <laughs> no, well, I that's played a little not football. what I heard. Played a little football, a <laughs> little baseball. But I played a lot of softball. And, did yeah. did you have a ride back, or did some, some people said they had to hitch back? Actually, well, the bus would break down. That's when we get a hitch or a hitchhike home. That's about all you could do. Do you remember uh, high school? W were you friendly with Pat Mutaccio at this time in high school? Oh yeah. Well, of course he's much younger than I am. Yeah. Pat, okay. Uh, and, uh, what about Clarence? Was he Clarence Macy? Macy, yes. Uh, he and I were, well, he was younger than I was too by a couple of years, but we were great friends. All the way so he would be on the bus as well yeah. when you were a senior mm -hmm. or a junior. Yeah. He would have. He had a brother, bus. Kenny, uh, that uh, Kenny Macy, and uh, he was about, he was a year older than I was, so I was kind of in between one of those kids. Oh, we haven't heard too much of, of, about him. Um, was social life difficult as a high schooler coming from Palm Springs? Were you well, isolated we from the banning kids? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we didn't have any dances or anything like that. And uh, about the only sports. And uh, would you say that banning looked somewhat the way Riverside and Redlands looked 30, 50 years ago? Uh, was it agriculture and orchards, and it looked very different than it does now? Oh it was yes, thriving. Town, actually. Yeah, they had a lot of water in those days, and they even generated their own electricity up from the water on the mountain. And it was all orchards, as I remember, clear from Cabazon. It was all apricot orchards, mm. clear in the band and clear mm. out the other side, and then and the water just dried up. And then they started growing seasonal crops, alfalfa and that sort of thing, didn't I have see. to be watered year round. And, and it's just been bad ever since. They just don't have any water in Banning. The, well, they more little domestic water, they have plenty of domestic water, but not for farming. So natural resources shaped yeah, the lower the, valley and, and yeah. the high desert and everything else. When I was a kid, the snow was on uh, San Gregorio and San Jacinto year-round and deep yeah. and way down, plenty of water. Water used to run from uh, Whitewater and Snow Creek and, uh, and Tarkwitz and Palm Canyon and all run down and beat up out of just about Indian Wells, mm -hmm. on about on the same track it's on now and running year-round. And it just keep down less and less every year. Of course, you would be very aware of that, whereas most yeah. of us would not, because yeah. your business was, is, and was dependent <laughs> on on those resources. Uh, you mentioned parties at the Roberson House, which is now Valerie Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Would that have been high school time or earlier? Yeah, both. Yeah, yeah Ruth Valour. Of course, they were, you know, I was kind of in between. Her sister yes. was older, and then Ruth was. Uh, 
several years, quite a few years younger than I am, but we would all get invited through the Robeson by just about all the kids that were in school, mm. which wasn't very many <laughs> at that time. Was it as wonderful looking house then? Oh as yeah, it is and had a nice now. patio and not yeah. unlike this house. It had the same Well, charm. it was a different type of house. It was a concrete house. I see. Poured concrete. This was frame and stucco and yes. adobe. It had that old charm. Yeah. That wonderful look. You got into the business uh, at an early age as far as helping your father with plants, and or were you not as much a part of the nursery business as a as a young man. Well, I worked at you know after school and that sort of thing like most kids. I what guess. What were the kinds of things that you did? Did you sell? No, mm. of course that when you talk about the nursery business in those days, it wasn't really. <laughs> if you had one customer a day. <laughs> did did uh, your father do landscaping? Yeah, did he, he, landscaping so that's and primarily what he did. And maintenance. And when when did you start? your business? Well, I was in the Navy for yes. four, pretty near five years, and when I got out, my dad wasn't feeling very well, so I, I was helping, going to help him, and uh, I was really, I was enrolled in the in the dentist college at USC, oh. so I set out a year, and I thought, well, I'll help him, and then one thing led to another, and I didn't think I wanted to be a dentist, so I just got started in this, and then my dad died in 1953, and uh, so I bought my mother out and just been doing it ever since. You started out uh, in a, obviously a smaller operation on Indian. Oh, yeah. On Indian Avenue. And then on the, I have a picture. Is this when the present location was? Made? Yes, that was, and um, that's where before, of course, before I moved out there. Prepared. That's before the bridge was built. Uh, and when when actually did you move to the present location? Gosh, I think it's about. I don't remember about about 30 years ago, I guess. 25, about 25 yes. years ago, I guess. And of course, you have a a store in in. They one in Indio and one in uh, Rancho Mirage. Yes, mm -hmm. and this is how many acres? Is it's 26 acres. This piece here. We talked about some of the changes, the climatic changes. Uh, you you mentioned the water, but you made a very interesting comment that. As far as Palm Springs and the growth of the, the valley, really, as far as tourists go and, and people moving here, you felt that, that Eisenhower had a great deal to do with the popularity of the desert. Oh, well, I've always said that. Yeah, uh, that and, uh, I know a thing, I don't mean that he put it on a map, it would have been here without him. But yes. <laughs> I know it was everything just kind of coasting along, and then when he came and stayed with the Helms, Paul Helms at Smoke Tree Ranch, and played golf at Thunderbird, and everything just seemed to take off after mm -hmm. that. It just oh, that was an interesting observation. And he kept coming back every year, and it was, a, I think he and there's a million people that's uh, done a lot for the country around here, but I think mm -hmm. he and Bob Hope, Eisenhower and Bob Hope, have done more for the towards po making yes. the city popular as than anybody. Yes. Also, speaking of change, and of course we're, you know, back to to natural resources. I I was curious about the business, the nursery business, thinking that new species of plants are developed, and and but you mentioned that nothing changes under the sun. Really, it just plants go in and out of fashion the way clothes do, and and. People get on, get interested in in oriental plants, for example, yeah. and and different kinds of plants. They become popular, and then mm. they recede, and other plants become popular. Well, it's very trendy, yes. for, for, uh, certainly. But the, there's been a lot of pro uh, varieties of plants that have been improved. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's really very few things that have been come out. It's just I something see. old that's brought back and improved at crossbreeding and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. That, mm -hmm. It everybody seemed like about every five year, five to eight years, a trend will change. It'd be Oriental, or they want mm -hmm. Spanish, or modern. Or mm -hmm. Is that true for outdoor plants as oh, well yeah, as indoor? Oh yeah, Interesting. You did you did say along with the 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 change in in the availability of water that there has been a change in 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 winds over the last 
Oh, it certainly has. Years years. We don't have half the wind that we used to. I remember probably 25 years ago when they first built the uh, Whitewater Country Club to blow for 75 mm. days and they never could run a sprinkler for 75 <laughs> days. They have to lay the hoses down on the greens just to save them. And people say, oh, you don't blow it. It's, they've forgotten that. You, you can certainly stop the sand, but you can't stop the wind. But I think with all, I really think that with all the the uh, growth we have now with all the trees yes. and everything, and that certainly breaks it up. And yes. But I know the weather seems to it certainly changed not only mm -hmm. from the uh, wind but uh, moisture and mm -hmm. everything concerned. But you don't feel that it's internal, that it has to do with the growth of the valley, that it's worldwide, global. There oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. All over. You hear Even a lot the of humidity. You hear a lot of people say, oh, with all this farming and the swimming pools and this rage making it so humid, that hasn't had one thing to do with <coughs> maybe raise the humidity, maybe 1%. When you have a humid day, you just look at the weather map and you see come right out of the Gulf of Mexico, come right out this way, and that's when you, that's when it happened. And it happened 30 years ago and 50 mm, years ago, on as <laughs> well as last year and so yeah. forth. It's just like this humidity we had here when it was the other day. It's just yes. all that stuff that's coming up out of Baja. And yes, and you man. certainly would be aware of that. Yeah. Speaking of heat and humidity, you were often here when it was very warm, you, you you stayed here during the summers often when you were growing up sure. and starting out in business. And there were some very interesting measures taken by people to keep cool. Um, hmm. You mentioned submarines. What what are submarines? Well, they call them submarines. They started down the valley around Indio, and they were like a qua shaped like a Quonset hut, only much smaller, mm -hmm. but they'd be about 12 by 20 or something like that with a half round roof made out of, of galvanized iron. And then they put these cotton uh, sh cotton sheets on that, covered with that. You had a pipe down the top <laughs> with drip, the water drip down on it, and the water would evaporate, and that would cool it on the inside. And you could really get a cold in there. You'd have to open the doors a lot of times to get that. Good for sleeping? Of course, uh, give you arthritis, but. Yes, <laughs> and a there. number of other problems, yeah. but you were, <laughs> you were, you were cool. Yeah. And you own one of the first air conditioning manufactured units. Yeah, I wish I had that out here. They were sold <laughs> at uh, Mr. Lick and I had them, and I think they were the first yeah. manufactured air conditioning. So we all made them out of chicken wire and Excelsior with a fan and that sort of sure. thing. But this, this thing was made, factory made, had a little pump on it, and you used your house fan to, it had sheets went up and down like that, and it had a little, you put a fan in front of it, and the, the house fan, and the fan turned another little fan that worked to pump, and pump the water up and down on these little pieces of sheet, and the air would go through there, and it, it worked. It's just vap evaporative was cooler. Was it large? Right? Was it? No, well, about that wide and about that high. Because usually those those early machines were, were yeah. inordinately large. I think and, Tom Kiley sold me that when he was working at Licken store. <laughs> <laughs> and what would Carl Licken have? Dozens of them installed. Oh yeah, like sold a lot of them. Who yeah. who manufactured them? I gosh, I wish I could, uh, that's around here somewhere. That's yeah, down the well, basement somewhere. Yeah, dig it up at at some day. I I think that's that's wonderful, particularly in contrast to Harry Matascio's air conditioning unit yeah, that he, he, had the first he made. It had the, he had the first refrigerated one. That's what, mm -hmm. uh, this other yes. one I have is just it's a evaporative cooler. cooler, but. Yes. Harry had that one and took the coils out of a big uh, walk-in freezer and put it up in the corner of the room and had fan lines. It really worked. That thing would just, you'd get so cold in there, you'd run you out, uh, really. In the restaurant, did it work in the restaurant, in yeah. the bar, no, or, did, or in the pool room, or both? I don't remember in the, I think he just blew it, and it was right up in the corner. I can see it now. And he had that <laughs> restaurant in the front with a counter and a yes. few tables. And the kitchen was right in the middle, and then the pool hall and bar was in the back. And I think he had that before booze came back. I think it was in uh, about, about 32 he had that in there. And Definitely. he didn't have a bar then because he I didn't see. have a... Yeah. It was that restaurant. But he had a pool hall back yes. there. And then when he, he had, I think Harry had the first liquor beer license, and then when the 18th Amendment was repealed, he had the first liquor license, I think. He was a pistol, wasn't he? Oh, nice <laughs> man. I could tell you the only thing he knew how to say in English. If Harry had lived here for a hundred years, he'd never learn how to speak English so he could understand. 
I liked him. Nice man. He certainly got along, though. Oh, yeah. You know, that, his kids are not very nice, too. They're oh, yes. Nick and Pat. Yes. I can't remember the girl's name. They have wonderful stories of, of those times and, and their father. You also mentioned uh, a fire, major fire, on Palm Canyon that uh, seemingly destroyed the palm trees. But your father, of course, knew palm trees. Yeah. He knew they would survive. Yeah, they had a, it was quite a fire. Well, you could see that for hundreds of miles. That smoke going up there, was really something, and there was no putting it out because you couldn't. It was so hot you couldn't get in there. Mm. Just then it went through so fast. A palm tree with those skirts down is just like a chimney, you know, and it just that draft mm. goes up in the boys. It just sends the sparks and everything. This would have been in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember this uh, one. Sure. I would think about 1936, I would think. In the summer? Mm -hmm. Gosh, I don't remember. And people, of course, thought the trees were destroyed, but... Oh, yeah, they sent the CCC boys out oh. and uh, with so a lot did. of portable generators and these uh, wire brushes and try to clean them up, but <laughs> it, that all goes away. That There's hardly any trees around that haven't been burnt sometime, really. And they're hardy, and they yeah, survive. they always come back. Is that the Civilian Conservation Corps that was active? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and they then went on to survive. Mm -hmm. I have this picture of planting, I guess, more palm trees, or are these the? You know, the th this is later. The city planted all the trees on palm. We planted them, and uh, mm -hmm. I see. they were dedicated to my my father. Ruth Hardy is the one I think that pushed that uh, really ran out to get the trees in. And so we uh, owe the present view of Palm Canyon to to that yep. those plantings. Another natural phenomenon or disaster was the flood of '38 that you remember uh, well. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Was that very dramatic? Yeah, it was quite a flood. The, you know, Cathedral City and Palm Desert all had, and Rancho Mirage all had mud across the highway two or three feet deep. And uh, Palm Canyon, they ran side to side. And everywhere, just a flash flood. Mm. And a lot of damage. I understand the town was significantly cut off. Right? Yeah, the bridge was washed out out at uh, Windy Point and they couldn't get anything in there. Nobody was. Of course, the papers played it up uh, considerably that the uh, people were starving and all yeah. that. There was well, actually it was only what a just couple a, of days. Well, the next day, some yeah. of the trucks would come through the washes, you know, and it wasn't that bad. But it was uh, certainly memorable. People yeah. remember it uh, as a major event. We we've been talking, of course, about your young younger days when you were a young man, and uh, there was still a lot of history, there is still a lot of history to be discussed as far as when you were an adult in the 40s, going to places like the Chi Chi, you, you really knew Erwin Schumann and oh, yeah, admired yeah. him, and if you might want to tell us a little bit about, uh, about him and about the club. Well, he, Erwin came here, I don't remember, this was, uh, I don't know how long ago, it was in the 40s, certainly. Mm -hmm or probably it was in the 30s, really, that he came here. And then he, he lived down there where Paul D'Amico's restaurant is now. There was a juice stand there, and he lived there in the back for a long time. And, and he took over the chichi from his, to run a chichi from his brother, Mark. And, uh, and he just built it from there. Just kept adding on. A lot of people didn't know it, but there was a big ice rink in that chichi <gasps> underneath the whole stage turned, uh, the stage went back in underneath and had a great big ice rink in there. And, uh, the myth it, says that it's still there somewhere underneath the <laughs> ground. <laughs> well, <laughs> when they built day. that thing, they tore it out to the, I guess when they built the fashion center. Yes. But uh, he always had the best food and we'd eat dinner there all the time and a lot of the entertainers got started there. That's Sammy Davis Jr. Mm. was there and uh, Liberace certainly started there. And Perry Como had a lot of famous people entertained there. This is the famous Chi Chi. Yeah. <laughs> this was on the 
I know this is the painting that was yeah. the picture that was there. He uh, had it on a menu, and covered I, a menu. Yes, it? and it's this, of course, is inscribed to you and to Mrs. Neal. Well, and he was he was really involved in a lot of things. So oh yeah. His finger yeah. on the pulse of not only entertainment but real estate. Oh yeah, real estate. He owned hundreds of acres down where Eisenhower Hospital is now and across the street where the mm -hmm. Springs uh, condominiums and golf course was. And he owned a lot of that land right behind Thunderbird. He owned a lot of land around. What was, was the blue room part of the Chi Chi or was mm -hmm. that a... That yeah, was that was the original, one of the original rooms and it was funny how it happened. He had a he built the room and then he, he he bought that property where Safeway is or was. Mm -hmm. It was an old the Killa property was right. there and it had all this stuff stored away and it was a huge chandelier. When he and he put it in there that was too big for the room. So then he he sunk the floor down in the center of the room, put tables around and he put a big dome in the ceiling so he could hang that chandelier in there. That's what he got for the blue room. <laughs> he really had a he was uh, very theatrical. Oh, he's a he's a fancy man. <laughs> and then he bought during the war. He bought all those chi He had them all over Long Beach, Riverside, and all over. And, uh, and he even built one in Twenty Nine Palms, uh, and uh, it burnt down. But then he sold. Uh, then he sold out to Pig and Whistle. Oh. And then they operated this one, and then he had to take it yes. back. And Do you remember the cost of uh, was that was there a cover charge? To get in, or, or I don't remember. Do you, do you remember oh, what, for what the a floor meal? shows? For yeah. the floor show, yeah. What a meal might have been. Well, we were talking about it one day, and uh, we used to go down there, and we could go down and have a couple of drinks, and have a nice fillet, bacon wrapped fillet, and a real nice salad with the chi chi dressing and coffee, <laughs> for under five dollars. And Sounds like a now terrific Now today deal. you'd be looking at about thirty dollars. Oh, if 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 that, or you more, know, yeah. and more. Yes. <laughs> when did you become interested in flying? Well, Clarence Macy uh, was the pilot. He uh -huh. and George Streeby, Earl's brother, sure. and I used to fly. And where I really got started, there was a man. Uh, it's where Alan Ladd's uh, hotel is on, on Indian Avenue. Yes. That was belonged to a man named Barry, Frank Barry. Frank Barry stole people. And they had a son named Paul, he was much older than I was, and he bought one of the major fleet's trainers. And uh, so I was a little kid and I had an inertia starter on it. And so you had to get out and turn this big old crank oh to start gosh. it. So he'd take me along to do the cranking. So I got to ride with him everywhere. We went, God, we flew for hundreds of hours. Would the airport have been on Section 14 oh, yeah. at this time? Mm -hmm. And that's where you would fly out of? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd fly over to Phoenix and Tucson, Las Vegas, San Diego, and down to La Quina and all over. And Zaddy Bunker would have been in her 60s? Yeah, well, she time. didn't take up flying till after the war. Yes. But uh, Clarence Macy, I don't know whether he still flies or not, but he was a very good pilot. He has talked about those days, uh -huh. yes. I I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. I know Wynn Line also has been fl had flown and has mm -hmm. been flying maybe even to this day. <laughs> George <laughs> Strebley and I used to go and we'd chase coyotes in the desert. Just get oh. right down. <laughs> God. Mm -hmm. what, what was George like? Oh, he's a nice guy, yeah. Had a lot of fun. Was he he and uh, Earl were fairly different personalities? Oh, all together, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah, Earl, George was a goer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, y you've been involved in in certainly in civic and and charitable organizations all of your life. Really, you were too young to remember. The uproar, or the the controversy over in in corporation, but you do remember the first uh, city council and oh yeah, who, it's, who uh, was I forgot involved. when it was when well, was fifty years ago. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. In fact, I got a picture out of my office that Tom Kiley was one of the first councilmen, and Bill Weiss, and yeah, the first city hall was right in the old uh, Sunshine Court. 
houses there, and I'm right next to that. That was Joe Henderson's yeah, his, parents. Yeah, his father. Parents, ran them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that what was that on off of Indian? No, right on Palm Canyon. On Palm Canyon. It went from Palm Canyon back to where I the American see. Legion is now. I see. Yes. To back to Bolardo. Well, those were certainly stalwart oh, few yeah, who well. started out in the in those days. Yeah. You've been active. Uh, you were a charter member of Los Compadres. Mm -hmm. And when when did that start? Was uh, that in before the, the war? It yes. Was, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, in the 30s. And were you involved in what kinds of activities? The breakfast rides and. Oh yeah, we had all kinds of pack trips and rodeos and all kinds of things like that. Was Frank Bogert very involved in Los mm -hmm. Compadres? Yeah, and Johnny Scott. And, yeah, just about all, about everybody in town that lived here mm -hmm. involved. Uh, You've been active in the chamber and the Rotarians and. Well, I was a Rotarian no. for a long time, and uh, then Bongo O'Donnell, and a bit on museum board. And then, uh, Do you remember? Uh, no one has spoken really about Dolly Marcuse, and you would have you would have been fairly close to her, would you not? You were involved with the museum and the board when it was on Talkwitz. Yeah, when we were on Indian Avenue and Talkwitz, but. Uh, no, I've never done him. Uh, I mm. never got acquainted with her. Much. I, I see, I see. You did also mention mention the Club of Twenty Five, mm -hmm. and that is Committee of Twenty Five. Committee of Twenty Five, rather, mm -hmm. and that has been often mixed up with O'Donnell, the the Twenty Five who. Well, people who think it belongs to O'Donnell. Right. Doesn't it? Actually, at the house uh, where we have the club was. Mm -hmm. uh, John Klein's, uh, the uh, Mr. O'Donnell maintenance man, and that was his home that he I built see. there for him. And that's where it comes from. And then the committee of twenty-five leases that from O'Donnell, and it has nothing to do with the golf course whatsoever. That's right. We we did see it. those days that when they started the committee of twenty-five, there wasn't any uh, other golf course, no clubs where you could go and have lunch or anything. And that's how it got started. Just so people go and have a nice lunch and men's club to sit around and talk, yes. and that's how it got started. Well, it is mixed up in, in many people's minds yeah, uh, certainly, uh, yeah. what exactly that was, and there, there's a great deal of mystery surrounding. Yeah, I know I'd be playing golf over there, and the guys say, take me into your club, and hey, how come you don't take me over to the club? And then, <laughs> so as we only have, we serve ladies' days Monday, and uh, and men's Wednesday luncheon on Tuesday, and then Thursday night dinners every night, and that's that's about what it amounts to. And then the you can rent the club because we have a president mm -hmm. chef there and manager and bartender and everything. And you can, if you want to have a party, you can go over there and, and take over the whole facility if you want and have any kind of an outside dinner or entertainment. Are there still 25 on the committee? No, uh -huh. no, there's there about 50 some members. Oh, any women? Yep. Well, they don't. Uh, they come as guests. They can use <laughs> the, They can use the <laughs> facilities on Monday. They don't have voting privileges. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've enlightened us mm -hmm. a great deal. Thank you, Earl, very much. Is there mm, anything pleasure. else you have been here for for a long time and <laughs> played an active role? Is there anything else uh, that you might want to mention? Any observations about what's happening to our natural <laughs> environment well, that you might want to sh say uh, or share? A lot of people always say that uh, the town's getting too big and, uh, and but I always say that I'd hate I'd sure as hell hate to live in a town that was going backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And We've uh, paid a lot for the progress, for the growth. Yeah, I, I'm all for it and if it's done in an orderly fashion mm -hmm. I think it's a great thing. I think that future of Palm Springs is in Palm Springs of Tahoe won't be in my lifetime, but when that gets going yes. up there, that's that's the place I would like to live there myself, uh, up about 2,000 foot level, and that's, but that's a long ways down the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have uh, contributed a great deal to, to, to uh, our town. I think the city has just done a, a wonderful job with what they've done. That mm -hmm. The town went so long without any in, without being incorporated with no ties that will hold anything down or develop anything properly and, and to make all those changes you're going to make some people mad and 
Yes. But I think they've done a great job with uh, planning. But Marvin Roos is good, and John Hachione is mm -hmm. doing. They're doing a great job. Yeah, I think people care. I think every I know people care. And oh, it's, sure. It's up to those those of us who really live here permanently to make sure that uh, a lot of the natural areas preserved, but mm -hmm. yet yep. accommodate mm -hmm. the, the growth. I'm glad to see, and I think it, but everybody feels the same way, that these hills will never be touched around, mm -hmm. uh, no more than they are now. Some of those houses got in before the yes. city had any control, but as long as I'm living, I, I know that nobody's ever going to scar these hills, and I think that this is my idea of the dead at Palm Springs is to, this is like an oasis, it's lush and green with the golf course and everything, and we have the nice desert hills around dry and unscarred. I think what we will do now is is probably photograph this environment. This is looking from, uh, from uh, west to east. This is the Odama House behind the Desert Museum, which is now right down here. And this is Takwas Canyon, and this is Palm Canyon, this is Caribou uh, Point. Uh, and this is the, the old Desert Inn Grounds. And this is where Odama Golf Course is now. We might want to say that this is around 1920. This is Palm Springs around 19, in the 20s. Okay, how about the one down by you, Nan? This uh, is the old, original Oasis Hotel. It's on the corner of Cockroach and, and Palm Canyon on the, on the south, southwest corner. That's the old tower. Now this is a... This is uh, the old Palm Springs Hotel. Looking from uh, from Maury Geyer's store is now across the street. And this is where uh, this is kind of a curio store. And, uh, that's where Harry McDowell's restaurant is. Right on the other side. It looks as if there's snow on the ground. It is snow. That was. <laughs> that was about twenty years ago. <laughs> How about the next one? And this is uh, taken in front of the Young River Hotel in Cactus Garden. It's Albert Einstein and his wife. That is in 33, actually. Yeah, 1933. Tracked. And this is where Odonna Golf Course is now. The cemetery back in here. 
And this is taken from the east to the west, facing the west is Dry Falls. And this is the original the El Mero Hotel. And this is the Las Palmas truck. And this back and here's where the dam is now, the conservation dam. This is a picture of similar outfit in Coachella. Back in the 20s, I guess. It says the Neo family. Are you are you in here? No, that's my sister's. That's wonderful. In the in 19, around 1910, it yeah. says. And this is my mother and father in Coachella in uh, about 1904. And, uh, this was an artesian well. In those days, they had artesian wells. The water just flowed out of the ground. Uh, this was the Elmerdor Hotel looking from south to the north. And this is Pump Canyon Drive going out, out of town. This is Indian Avenue. And this is the reservoir for the O'Donnell Golf Course. Nothing. I thought that walk was so pretty. Oh, sorry, I had them around for piles, and that one, that picture up there was taken. Did you go up? Oh, yeah. Excuse me, Bill. He's got all the numbers, Scott. <clears throat> he kept the numbers. 